Man, I get a kick out of reading these old 40k books. They were so much weird and wacky back then. Ah, would you look at that? That's pretty fun. <gasps> I must paint it. Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. Once in a lifetime, you find that special model. That model that you connect with deeply and emotionally. That model that you want to spend the rest of your life with. I think this may be the best model Games Workshop has ever made. Move aside, Bellacor. Get out of here, Mephiston. Orc Tin Boy has you beat. I will strip off his old paint to expose the glittering leaded pewter underneath, then give him a paint job deserving of a model this good. And stick around till the end to see a montage of painted models courtesy of the EOB Complete community. This model is a Rogue Trader era Orc Tin Boy. From back in the good old days of 40k, uh, Orc mechs piloted small legions of robots into battle, and they were each based off of the other races of 40k. This one was based off of the good old Space Marines, but there was also two other Tin Boys. One based off an Eldar warrior, and the other one a Squat. Before we get to the painting, I want to take a moment to admire this classic retro paint job. It's really painted pretty good, certainly a product of its time. The dry brushing takes pretty good advantage of the gritty texture of the metal model, and the freehanding is pretty top notch. The colors are certainly garish enough to represent those rogue trader orcs perfectly. It'll be a twinge painful to strip this down, but he's mine now. Now one of my biggest pet peeves in the hobby is stripping models. I hate it. Taking models, putting them in a bath with some cleaner, and it's all the same. And don't go leaving a comment saying you gotta use simple purple, that's the only one that works. All of the cleaners are the exact same thing. You let the model soak overnight, then you take it to the sink and scrub the heck out of it with a toothbrush and you get off about 97% of the paint. But that last 3%, it mocks me. It stares at me laughing. I don't get the point of stripping, I don't do it much. I just paint on top of the old paint, who cares? Paint is such a thin layer, why would it make a difference? But with this metal model, I'll make an exception. Metal models are super easy to strip because you can use the good stuff. This is acetone, nasty stuff. It's often found in nail polish remover and paint thinner. This stuff liquefies plastic models, but won't hurt metal, so it should do the best possible job of removing this 30 year old paint. I was hoping this would look cooler than it did. The paint didn't fall off, it just loosened. The plastic base I put it in did liquefy though. All right, well, uh, not too much happened, which is kind of what I expected, but the base completely liquefied. I actually put the base in just so that I'd see something happen because I want to have a little fun. But the paint should want to come right off. Yeah, right down to the metal. Yeah, that leaded pewter is really gonna shine. This is perfect. Well, I've got this little cutie down to bare metal. And one thing that's hilarious that I discovered is the original artist did not paint the gun. They actually left it bare metal and just put like a wash on top of it to bring out some of the contrast, which is super funny. I don't know if I will do that. I'll probably end up painting over it because I want a little bit more control over the values, but he is super, super cute. Ooh, my little tin boy. The first thing I did was I prepared to pin the model, but I don't want to drill anything. One of my favorite hobby cheats is taking the little tab, clipping it into pegs, and if you really want to be fancy, sanding those pegs down into nice round pins to be inserted into the base. I used to pin just about every model I had, and it was a gigantic waste of time for the most part, so little tricks like this, like getting pins out of a peg, is great. And I know another fun little trick. If you want to know exactly where to put the holes in the base, I like to put on just a, a few globs of paint, something bright like a red or a pink, and then touch it to the base, and kaboom. It'll give you a perfect impression of where to put those holes. All that was left to do was to drill a hole big enough for my pegs, and boom, perfect fit. Priming time. Give it a good old blast of Steinol Res Black Primer. It's time to put paint on this guy, and just like most of my painting projects, I have absolutely no idea what color I'm gonna use. 
but this little tin boy is me. This model is mine. I don't think it'll ever be in a game unless I need a proxy for like the emperor. So what am I gonna do to paint my little tin boy? I think I'm probably gonna use my favorite color, which is orange. That's what my gut's telling me, so that's what I'm gonna do. Orange Tin Boy. Now to paint him orange, you would think the first step would be to paint him orange, but no, no, no. Instead, I used brown. I'm base coating everything brown so that I have my darkest darks in place. I want to avoid red. A brown base instead of a red will help make him look more orange. I started to apply my orange with a dark orange, and I was already thinking about where my lights and shadows would fall. I'm doing more of a glazing with orange than a real coat. I want to slowly build up my color so that I leave enough of the brown in the recesses. This is a small model. I can take my time and still get it done in a timely fashion. I wanted to get an idea of where my highlights were going to go, so I began adding in some yellow. I'm doing bright, obvious patches where I think I'll need them. I'm almost treating this model as a non-metallic metal. These spots of yellow are going to be my bright reflections off an orange armor. Now that I have my highlighted areas, I went in with my true orange and brushed it on, moving away from my yellow spots, making a gradient back down to my brown. Usually Games Workshop models are dripping with detail. It's fun to get to play around with a model with so many flat, large panels. So this model is squarely in the ass phase of the model. Now that is when it looks like you've done everything wrong, there's no possible way you can recover, it looks horrible, the only thing left to do is to put it over, put it in the pile of shame and forget about it and start a new model. Not true. This is a phase that all models go through. Uh, it is basically just kind of the end of the base coat phase. And all that is required is pouring in probably about an hour's worth of work, blending and highlighting and layering to get everything looking just right. It's important to never give up on a paint job. I worked at the model, going over and over, applying more highlights of yellow and then bringing them back down with orange. It looked like a mess at first, but by the end I was really enjoying the process of adding and subtracting values all over the armor. All right, and it's as easy as that. Just a few minutes or hours later and it's looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and choose colors to base coat everything else. Now that my orange armor was complete, I base coated the other parts of the model. In one shoulder pad, I went with gray. This shoulder will eventually become white, but gray covers black much better than white. And painting gray first will save me many coats of paint in the long run. It's always a good idea to make the head a different color. I thought that blue would stand out really nicely on top of the orange armor. And I decided this little face medallion on the leg was gonna be purple. I applied some dark gray to his black shoulder pad in a subtle gradient, probably too subtle to notice. Every paint job is a learning experience. I think I have just enough of the colors all put in that I can start some of the freehanding. This model is gonna be give me a great opportunity to work on my freehanding. It's rare you get such big, wide open spaces, so I'm gonna go pretty hard on this guy. On his left shoulder, I decided some nice hazard stripes would be appropriate. To do this, I layered on some white stripes. If you want an in-depth tutorial on hazard stripes, you can watch this video here on how to paint hazard stripes. The brighter white I can make these stripes, the easier it'll be to make them yellow in the future. On the right shoulder, I thought some checkers would look nice, so I loaded up my brush with some thin black paint and I made myself some fine lines across the shoulder as a guide for me to follow. I loved the blue on his face, so I decided to make my checkers blue also. I filled in half of the boxes. I really, really wish that uh, there was some way to like like the, the three, the three super easy steps to freehanding, but there really isn't. It's just a, a skill you acquire with more and more experience. I think the best way to improve really is to make sure you get more practice. So you give yourself models that will give you the opportunity to practice on. I also gave his power fist some hazard stripes. Perhaps the shoulders and hand come as a set. I always try and paint light stripes over top of dark base coats, as it's much easier to correct by painting more dark colors to cover up any mistakes on my light stripes. With my stripes perfected, I painted in the yellow. It applied perfectly in one coat because it was going over a white base coat. And to give them some definition, I gave them a splash of orange on the bottom to show the stripes that were in shadow. I've got all this room on the top of this shoulder pad, and I think I know the perfect thing to go on it. The channel is called Eons of Battle. I think there's just enough room for an EOB. This now isn't an orc robot, it's a painting channel mascot. I painted the O right in the middle to make sure I had enough room left for the E and the B. With this model monogram, it's time to do a PP, a Patreon plug. If you enjoy our videos, the best way to support us is by becoming a member of our Patreon. 
Over there, you'll get access to some behind the scenes, voting on what models I paint live here on YouTube, extra live streams every week, and more. Now let's finish painting this little orc fella up. The one thing I've been dying to do this whole time is his eyes. I started by base coating them white. They are comically long eyes, so there's plenty of room to play with. Then I dotted each eye red to give them an evil stare. But then I dotted the dots and gave a final spot of white to give him crazy psycho eyes. I would love to see orc robots come back. And you know what? Still make them Space Marine, Eldar, and Squats. Do it. Ah, oh, people would lose their minds if there was a squat model, but not for a squat army for the orcs. I absolutely want to see it. Games Workshop, make it so. I love the idea of a pewter gun, so I took my shiniest silver and base coated the gun. And for all his tubes, I painted them copper. I don't know what it is about these old minis, but it's hard not to paint them like it's 1995. I don't use washes that often, but it felt right for this model. I gave his gun a good old coat of Games Workshop Null Noil. This little fella is looking great, but I think he needs something. I'm gonna edge highlight everything, and I think that that's going to be what really helps to outline and define all of his nice pewter edges. The point of an edge highlight is to outline parts of the model. Edge highlighting is not particularly accurate or realistic, but when your entire model is barely an inch tall, it's a great way to make sure all those details are clear and evident, even when viewed across the gaming table. My little tin boy is finished, but is he really? He's not based, and no mini is truly finished without a base. I think we need to fix that. I'm gonna give him a classic retro base, and if you wanna see an in-depth tutorial, click here. But basically, I cover the base with white glue, sprinkle on some sand that is a little bit too big, then I painted the naked sand goblin green, and not wanting the rim of the base to feel left out, I painted that green too. Then I gave it a shade with some green wash, and finally, a little bit of dry brushing with some yellow paint. He is so cute! This is the oldest model I have ever painted, and it was a really unique experience, and an absolute blast. This guy will look great in an orc army. He fits right in. See? Perfect match. Jokes aside, this model really does have a special something about him. Its simplicity makes him the perfect game piece. Modern 40k models are outstanding, but they're kinda unwieldy. The game might have better play with lumpy lead models, in terms of movement and measuring. It's a catch-22. I probably wouldn't buy so many models if they did not look amazing. But the game would be a bit easier to play if the models were smaller and simpler. Researching the Tin Boy gave me the opportunity to dig through the old Rogue Trader Orc Codex, and what a read. It's amazing. But... I thought Games Workshop was bad at writing rules today, but this book, wow. It's just endless text with lore and rules flowing from one to another. I mean, it's 230 pages long. Every little thing has a page of rules about it, and even the rules for this one little tin boy are dense. I will now try to explain as succinctly as I can the nine paragraphs of rules. An orc mech can have a mob of up to four robots under his control, the mech can issue commands up to 16 inches away from the nearest robot, and that robot can transmit commands up to four inches to the next robot, meaning that the unit coherency for robots is four inches instead of the usual two. If a robot gets separated and has a gap larger than four inches from another robot, it does not receive new commands and continues to follow the last set of commands given. All the robots receive the same commands and will try to do the same thing each turn. Commands are given to robots after the orc player has completed their movement phase. The controlling player must keep record of the commands given because the robots perform the commands that they were given in the previous turn. So at the end of the movement phase, the orc player writes down the commands he will give to his robots, but remember that these will be followed the next turn. This turn, the robots will obey the commands given the last turn. These commands are any combination of up to three possible commands chosen from the command list but you may not choose more than one movement and one shooting command per turn. The list of commands is as follows. Activate, reverse, charge nearest model, halt, halt and turn about, halt and turn 90 degrees to the left, halt and turn 90 degrees to the right, move, move and turn 90 degrees to the left, move and turn 90 degrees to the right, move slowly, fire at nearest target that isn't green, fire at nearest target, fire directly ahead, self-destruct, fire at nearest vehicle, fire at nearest infantry, fire at nearest enemy in cover, fire at nearest stationary target, fire at nearest moving target, fire at furthest target, make terrifying wog noise, Repeat, here we go, here we go, here we go. Wow. 
I mean, it's kind of fun, but it's like a whole nother game just controlling these robots. Well, Rogue Trader looks like a hoot, and I might have to give it a play one day. But for now, I'll just admire my little tin boy. Also, for anyone thinking of stripping their models with acetone, do not use it on plastic models. This is the plastic base I put in with the tin boy. This is what your model is going to look like. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was an absolute blast to make. This model was actually given to me by one of my patrons, Cold Shower. Thank you. Let me know in the comments below what are your guys' oldest models. But without further ado, it's time for EOB Completes. We put out a challenge to our community to send us before and after photos of their recently finished models to be immortalized in our videos. If you want to join in the fun, you can submit a before and after photo of your painted mini to our Discord server, which you can find in the description below, or you can post it to Instagram with the hashtag EOBcomplete. Without further ado, let's look at and get inspired by what the folks have finished this week. Some Guardsmen by Disco, a post-apocalyptic Luigi by The Happy Heretic, a Primaris Redemptor Dreadnought by Huntron, a Weird Boy by It's Me 33, a Dark Knight by Visic, a Loon Boss by The Thick Dickler, some Mortifiers by The Rake, a Gene Stealer Biophagus by Decimation, a Scorpac Destroyer by Lord Prime, a Primaris Captain by John Patrick Meyer, Creed by Law and Minis, an Assault Intercessor by Power Surge, some Centurions by Zirule, some Crute Riders by Fifth Street 315, a Q Ganger by Mommy Negan, a Catachan Sniper by Harazang GF, some Elves by Andy Crimson, an Imperial Knight by Chris Carnage, a Chaos Lord by Zippy, and a Barbarian by Toon. Congratulations to everyone for a job well done. It's no small feat to get paint on minis and you all should feel really proud. Nothing gets the hobby juices flowing like finishing a project and we all thank you for sharing your work, motivating us and the hobby community to paint our plastic. Thanks for sharing.